This YouTube channel is all about the Motley Muse art. I create art and I teach you how to create your own. Please subscribe. The first thing that we're going to do is add the base colors. I have orange, yellow, green, and blue. These are going to be the foundations that we're going to build on. As I blend, I like to wash my brush periodically every time that I change colors. This will help make a better blend. Sometimes it's a good idea to dry the colors in between as you're blending because otherwise if you blend too much and you're back and forth, back and forth, going up and down, up and down as you're going sideways, you're going to blend all the colors together and eventually you'll just have brown on your canvas. So it's a good idea to wash your brush and dry every so often and add a little bit of color and just let it build up over time gradually, slowly by slowly. See how I'm adding more yellow onto the green and slowly blending it down? Because I had dried the green underneath when I blend and I add more yellow there, it doesn't just only make green. I'm getting a definition between the yellow, the green, the orange, and the blue. Each has its section, but then also notice that with this blend, because I am doing a Van Gogh style and a little bit of a pointillism, I don't need to be super perfect with the blend. It's okay if it's a little bit rough. We're gonna layer on top. So now I'm gonna use my medium round brush and I'm gonna start giving myself an outline as to where the moon and the stars and the pattern of the way that the air is going to move and swirl around. So this yellow is mostly just a basic idea to let me know where everything's gonna go. Are you having fun? I know I am. I enjoy painting. Allow your painting to flow and just move how you want it to move. Don't worry about your Van Gogh style painting looking exactly like everyone else's. Make it your own original art. I'm going to go ahead and add some blue around the stars and this is going to be the moon over here. So a little bit of blue. What I'm doing is I'm adding swooshes. I'm thinking to myself, what is the pattern of the way that the sky is moving and the air in the sky. So it's going to go around the stars and then it's going to have swooshes all throughout the atmosphere. So I'm just doing little commas. They're slightly curved ever so slightly, but they're lots of little dots. Now don't worry about mixing at this point. We're just getting a basic foundation and laying down the basic idea of what's going on. Now, the more that we cover and go with different colors, the cooler it's going to look. So be patient and take your time. From time to time, now that I'm doing the top coat with the pointillism, I prefer to dry the paint every so often. This will help so that way that the paint isn't mixing in color a whole lot on the canvas. Now, a little mixing is cool here and there. But for the most part, I'm going for the look where the bright blues, the light blue, the orange, the green, I want them to be all separate colors and distinctive in their own little brush strokes. And by drying the painting, this will help achieve that look. For this painting, because I don't want the paint to be raised and chunky, I am using a low heat setting. In order to make green, we mix yellow and blue together. A little bit of blue turns the green a light green. The more blue you add to the yellow, the darker the green will be. So I'm going to go here and in the middle part of the atmosphere, I'm going to come over and make some swooshes of green. Now it's going to look a little weird at first. This is a painting in which we are going to build it up like a cake with many different layers. So just kind of imagine and think where would the middle part of the atmosphere be and it's mostly around this curvy swoosh that I'm doing. So this swoosh is to symbolize and to give the look of the idea that the air is moving and it's wind and it's pressure that's moving in the atmosphere and the green it's more like the atmosphere that like it's kind of where we are but it's a little bit higher than where the humans and the trees are. So I do want to have a distinction between 
the orange and the green and I'm going to build that up as I go over time. So let's add some white with the blue and make it lighter in value. The more blue you add to white, the darker color you're going to get. So don't add a whole lot of blue, just a lot of white and a little tiny bit of blue. And go in and in between all these little white spaces that I see that don't have paint on them, I'm trying to get those and cover them as much as possible. I don't really want to cover up the dark blues. It's okay if you cover up sun because we can always go back and add more and add more. Now I want you to keep in mind, the more little swooshes you add, the cooler it's going to be. However, if you add too, too many, you're going to start getting a pointillism and you're going to get away from impressionism a little bit. And what pointillism is, is a bunch of little dots that come together to make a picture. Now that's totally cool and really awesome. There's so many cool artists out there that have done some awesome work. But we're trying to really go for more of a Van Gogh style. And when he painted... He didn't really do dots as much as he did little swooshes, little tiny lines. So try to keep that in mind when you're swooshing on the paint. Now it's time to add some orange. I'm going to go in here and I noticed that I kind of got a little bit too overexcited with the green there. So I'm going to try to cover up some of this blue and the green down here to really make it so I have my little orange area. I want it to pop a lot in color. Let's add some white in the center of the stars. Oops, I did a little mistake. That's okay, don't worry. We'll just let it dry and we'll come back and touch it up in a little bit. If you have a big boo-boo and you're stressed out and the painting is just not working, allow your paint to dry fully, completely, and then come back and visit it. If you have wet paint and you keep just adding more paint and moving it around and moving it around, eventually what you're going to get is called mud, where it's just a bunch of the paint. It all comes together and it's just icky 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 mess so if you're frustrated and you make a move boo just go ahead let it dry completely once it's dried all the way wash your brush get a clean brush and some fresh paint and start over again sometimes it's a good idea to go across to the other side of the room and look at your painting from a distance sometimes we get too focused up close and personal with our painting that we forget to see the big picture and how it all comes together especially the further that you move away from the painting when it comes to impressionism the cooler and more awesomer it's gonna look and the closer you get to it you're gonna see all the little brush strokes which is also equally awesome but what this does it'll give you two different perspectives so remember to stand up and go to the other side of the room and I like to paint the sides of my canvas I do that so that way it makes the painting a look like it's finished ready to go and I don't need to buy a frame or anything because it's already a stretched canvas over a frame so it already works out I don't have to spend more money it's a good idea to dry every so often I I've seen people do this technique where they don't dry but then I feel as though I have to be extra super careful not to blend a whole lot on the canvas so go ahead and dry so that way you don't have to blend a whole lot on the canvas. We really want those colors to pop and be very strong against each other. We want to see a lot of brush strokes. Using high heat on your hair dryer, preferably with a heat gun, is pretty cool to make the paint rise and have a little bit of a bubbly look. It's hard to... Um, make the bubbles go exactly how you want to with the heat gun but oh my goodness the effect is totally cute but for this one i'm going for a low heat setting and this is going to make it so that my paint dries flat i'm going to add a little bit of extra green here i like to have different shades of green i want to have lights darks mediums of all the different hues on the canvas now I'm going to be mindful to, to try not to cover up all my orange because I still want to have the gradient from the orange, the green, and the blue.
Van Gogh was known in his paintings for doing multiple layers. His paintings happened over days and weeks. He didn't just sit and paint it all in one session. He did lots of layers. And so that's what I'm doing here, just adding lots and lots of layers. The more layers you add, the more it's going to look amazing. But remember, each of these brush strokes, we want them to go into the direction of the way that the air in the sky is moving. And we still want them to be dots, or excuse me, swooshes. We don't want dots. We want long, skinny swooshes that are curved. You can change your brush size when doing this. Now, I've chosen to use my medium round brush the whole time throughout. The, this part with all the dots. Uh, if you do change your brush, it's going to change the look a lot. So for example, when you're putting on the swooshes and you have a really large brush, then you're going to make a large swoosh. If you have a skinny liner brush that you're going to use after that, it makes a skinny little line. So that's cool. Uh, Van Gogh did that a little bit, but not a whole lot. If you check out his work, they're usually mostly his swooshes are roughly usually around the same size. So now that we have a nice covering on everything, let's go back over with the yellow and I'm going to really cake it on here. Yellow is a very see-through color because it's very um, light in hue. And so that because of that, I'm just going to kind of cake it on, but still try to keep those swooshes and it's really going to make it I recommend buying expensive thick paint when it comes time to paint this style. The reason why is because it has more pigment in it and it, everything is brighter and shows up more. If you buy a cheaper paint and paint with it, what's going to happen is you're going to have to put more layers on to really be able to get that look of the hue that you want. But if you're already buying thicker paint, then which is I consider better quality paint then you don't have to put as many layers however I've tried many different brands and in the end of the day I find that in almost every single brand when it comes to the color yellow I usually always have to put two coats but if you have a good quality uh, blue and purple and the darker tones then they usually like this one just one coat is fine I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white here with the swooshes just to give it an extra little pop of color and just, yeah, kind of makes it more 3D. I really want to keep those swooshes going and be really bright and poppy. So now I'm going to add a little bit of white around the stars, just some little swooshes. And what this is going to do is give it kind of a twinkly sort of look, kind of like there's movement in the sky. There's some water vapor up in the atmosphere. And like we can see the stars and the moon, but they're still kind of a little blurry. And these little white swooshes are going to really help with that look. I've noticed here that I've had too much orange and I really want to cover that up because I want to show the sky moving so I'm gonna go ahead and paint some more of the blue around everywhere and some wide and just swoosh it and take your time enjoy the painting just remember don't dot swoosh I want to keep the top of the paint with more dark blues and then have the lights kind of be more down now I noticed that it's kind of even everywhere I go. So it's just something that you got to build up like a cake, a layer by layer, and it'll really come out really good. It's, it's mostly, it's not about putting layers for having um, the colors be darker. No, it's more about having layers to really get everything, like moving it around and really adjusting it and making sure that it really looks like the air is moving. To get another shade of green, I'm going to add some white here and look at what this is doing. Isn't that cute? I mean, how awesome, right? It just really shows an extra little pop of color with the highlight. I love adding shadows and highlights and always I recommend putting the shadows and the dark hues on first 
and then lightening the value with the highlight after you have the dark on there and it just they come together so nicely and it really lets the painting pop with color When I'm painting in the studio, I always have music on in the background. I don't have any music right now because I'm teaching this class and I have a lot of students around the world who have many different tastes in music. So because of that, I don't have music. But go ahead, turn some music on. Enjoy it. Have a party. It's always a good idea to dry so that way when you do the next layer, in case you do something that you don't like and it's a big boo-boo, you can just wipe it off really quickly and it'll be fine. But if the paint's all wet and you add more paint and you don't like it, then ugh, when you wipe it off, it's going to be a big old mess. So I'm going to do a moon here and I'm going to make a C. It, the moon could be in like any direction really. I'm just choosing to make a backwards C just because. So I'm going to do a really dark edge around it and then I have the yellow in the front. I'm going to let it dry so that way when I go back over the orange with some yellow and some white, it, they really, I'm going to let them blend. But because the white and the yellow is such a really light hue, if I dry what's under the orange, it won't mix as much. And that yellow is very see-through so the orange is still going to kind of pop through the layer of yellow. And yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I'm liking it. Yeah. And don't worry if you can't get this the first time. The first time I painted this style of painting, it was really bad. It took me many times to get to this level, so don't stress out. So let's do some trees. Now I have some straight black, and I took the liner brush. And now I'm just going and making swooshes that go down. I first like to kind of have the basic outline design of the tree, and then I like to fill it in. So right now, let's just fill in our tree. I'm not working, worrying so much about the edges. I'm going to come back and make the edges extra cute on the sides of the trees for the branches. Right now, I'm just blocking out the basic idea of the pine tree. Let's do another one over here. I want to pick out some locations as to where I want to still see the design of the painting of what's going on with the sky behind the trees but I also want to take a moment like right here I just I don't like this area it's not pretty so I'm just going to put a tree there and it's going to hide my happy little accidents that I had and no one will know. I'm making a choice to vary the size of my trees. So this is a lake view looking towards the shore. Some trees are going to be long, some are short. The shorter tiny ones are going to appear to be more in the distance because they roughly look like they're the same tree all together. Uh, but having different sizes is going to give the illusion that some trees are far away and some are close. So the ones that would be closest to us would be the bigger trees. Now I want to go ahead and Make sure that all the trees are touching, but I think it's a cool idea to give some space in between the trees. So with the base, I've kind of just made little squiggles of black lines. Once you have the layout of the trees and you're really happy with it, go ahead and work on the edges of the side just ever so slightly and let them come out. Uh, so. What I'm doing is I'm taking my brush stroke from the top and going down and swooshing out. I'm doing outward swooshes and to the right and swooshes to the left. Okay, so this is looking great. I'm going to go ahead and turn around the canvas. Now we're going to do the reflection on the water. So that's a big long tree right there. So I kind of want to do the same. Now I want my tree to look the same. However, it is the lake and I want the lake to appear as though there's movement in the water. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make sure that my tree looks the same but is not identical to the one on top. And by doing that it would be
basically it's like a little bit more blurrier like the water has distorted the the um, the image a little bit and it's really going to make it look extra realistic. So now I'm just going to kind of block out the basic idea of where everything goes. So the taller trees obviously are going to come down more into the water. The trees that are shorter are not going to be as long. And once I have all of these blacked out, I'm going to go ahead and work on the edges just like I did on the top where I'm going to make them swoosh out and everybody has really nice cool little branches. Be careful when you're painting that you don't accidentally touch your hand onto your canvas and swipe and accidentally cut like move the paint. For example, like you set your hand down and it kind of gets into the black and then you move it to the other side of the canvas and set it down again and while well, you've moved the black. I have almost done this in like almost every single one of my paintings and it's very annoying because then you have to go back and touch things up and so be very mindful that you keep your hand up while you're doing this. Make sure that when you're doing the edges of the tree that each branch and each tree has its own personality. Don't make every tree look exactly the same. The branches want to go basically roughly from the top to the down with the outward swoosh to the right and the left, but they don't, the right side and the left side of each tree wants to be slightly different. Make it natural. Give some room there for the birds to be able to land and hang out and have a a break. They need somewhere to sit. So once you have all the black painted, it's looking really good. I like it. You're doing a good job. Keep it up. So let's go ahead and take the hair dryer out and let's dry everything of all the black. We're going to do a layer of white over everything. And so, yeah, if we let it dry all the way, the white is going to be very poppy. Now, if you wanted some gray tones, you can do the same exact thing. Just don't dry it all the way. Keep it like a little bit wet. And what's going to happen is when you do the swooshes, the black on the canvas is going to mix in with the white. And you're going to mix the colors on the canvas as it goes. And they'll give you a really nice gray toned look to it. But then you're also going to have to keep in mind, keep washing your brush every two to three brush strokes so that way you can get fresh a fresh new blend but for me what I'm going to do is make it way simpler and easier on myself and this is not supposed to look like a photograph this is like very impressionistic so I'm just going to go ahead here with my liner brush and I'm going to do sporadic little swooshes I'm going to go to on the right of each of them and then after I do all the right side I'm going to go back over and do the left side and I'm being very mindful that I am starting the brush stroke from the top and swooshing down and to the right. And each little one, I'm trying to make them their own little personalities. And I'm making sure that when I dip my paint into the paint that I have a nice pretty point that I'm working with so that my brush isn't all flared out. So now let's do the left side. And remember, we don't want the right side and the left side to be carbon copies of each other. We want them to be both a little bit different. Now, some of these trees are a little bit fat. So on the little fat ones, I'm going to do the left side and then watch here. I'm going through the middle and I'm just going to get those swooshes to come down. And it's really going to help the tree look a little bit rounder and more 3D. So we want swooshes to the right, swooshes to the left. And then on the really fat trees, we want swooshes that go down. Now try to make sure that you're not doing one straight line down, that they're little individual swooshes. Now that the trees are looking awesome, let's work on the water. I'm taking my line brush and I'm going along the edge there where the water would hit the edge of the land right under the black line that I've made. Now I'm going and making horizontal swooshes that are all different sizes. Now, for the swooshes that are far away from us, they would be the ones closest to shore, closest to the middle of the painting. 
So those ones, I want to make them really tiny. And the ones that are the closest to me where my hand is right now, I want these to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to go back over a few of them and just make them a little longer. And I'm going to focus on just trying to get a lot of chaotic randomness. However, at the same time, I want to make sure that all of these lines are going horizontal. I want them to be each their own little idea. I'm trying to go also with the white marks into the trees themselves so they come and they go. So then it's like I'm not just making the line over the tree, like it half overlaps with the water and the tree itself. And this is about the end of it for the most part. Take a moment and just think what else could you do? Are there any little extra cool things? Thanks for watching. Push the purple flower to subscribe and you can watch all kinds of awesome videos.